Tonight's headlines are brought to you in part by Coldwell Energy and McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Customs Director lawsuit elevates to the federal court. Also tonight, COVID continues to spread in the Pacific. And officials break ground on an erosion preventing project. In sports, we feature a young lady with lots of running potential. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Sipping on a delicious drink from McDonald's may have you thinking, what makes these drinks just hit different? <laughs> Don't overthink it, just enjoy it. It's more than a drink, it's a McDonald's drink. Cool off this summer with McDonald's Minute Maid slushies. Try the new tropical mango or returning favorite, strawberry watermelon for a limited time. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Friday, July 29th, 2022. After dropping his lawsuit in the local courts, former customs director brings his complaint to the federal level, this time including the governor's chief of staff as a defendant. Jose Mofnes has filed a lawsuit against Finance Secretary David Atzilik and the Governor's Chief of Staff, Will Castro, in the U.S. District Court. Mofnes is requesting the court to issue a judgment against Atzilik and Castro for violations of his constitutional rights. Mofnes says he was discriminated and retaliated for exercising his right to the freedom of association. Mofnes is also asking the court to issue judgment on Castro and Atelik for political coercion. As of press time, no judge has issued a decision on the TRO. Health officials continue to see COVID-19 related deaths in the NMI. The Governor's COVID-19 Task Force and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation announces the CNMI's 38th COVID-19 related death this morning. So we can confirm the CNMI's 38th COVID related death, um, which will be included in next week's report. Uh, for privacy reasons, we won't disclose any further information about that case. This marks the third COVID related death of the week. CHCC's epidemiologist Jennifer Dudek. Of the 38 deaths we've had in the CNMI, uh, the vaccination status is as follows. Uh, 20 were unvaccinated, 17 were vaccinated, and one was partially vaccinated. Uh, to go through the deaths by year, um, this year, 2022, we've had 24 deaths so far. In 2021, we had 12 deaths, and in 2020, we had two deaths. 
Dr. Dudek states they have been seeing a downward trend on positive COVID-19 cases these past few weeks. Reports from the month of June were presenting over 200 positive cases per week. But those numbers are going down. This week's report confirms 173 new cases. Currently, there are zero hospitalizations. According to Dr. Lily Muldoon, because of the small surge of positive COVID cases, the NMI has moved into community-level medium. And so being in community-level meeting means that we should be wearing masks, making sure that we're staying up to date on our boosters, and just being conscientious of protecting our most vulnerable community members. So I would say during this surge, we have not really seen a large impact of COVID on our health system, which is good. We've definitely seen many patients with COVID. We have hospitalized patients over the past months who have had COVID, but we're not seeing the need to ration or um, actually seeing a detriment of other health care because we are taking too care to care of too many COVID patients. Those who test positive are encouraged to stay home and report your status online. The FSM, which had been COVID-free with closed borders, is now dealing with community spread and some alarm within the community. Their president addressing the situation. How did COVID-19 arrive into the FSM when the borders remained, remained closed? We don't know. Our Department of Health and Social Affairs was unable to find any potential weaknesses in the quarantine sites across the country. Given that COVID-19 has arrived in the FSM, we are unprepared to spend additional resources on exploring its origins. What is most important now that the virus is here is that we work together in keeping our country safe from it. What I ask is that all of us as Micronesians continue to see each other as brothers and sisters and to treat each other with love. We are all in this together. Second, will there be a hard lockdown imposed by the national government? No. The FSM national government will not impose a lockdown for any FSM state. The advice I have received from our Department of Health and Social Affairs is that the initial transition period from being COVID-19 free to COVID-19 infected will take about one to two months for each FSM state. I will require that all persons wear masks when in public places which some states are already enforcing. I will require all persons who feel sick or get tested or to get tested and stay home. I will request that all citizens stay home unless it is essential for them to go to work. Gas prices in the CNMI continues to drop, which has resulted in a decrease of the fuel adjustment charge. The Commonwealth Utilities Corporation announces a decrease to the fuel adjustment charge rate. Effective August 1st, current FAC rate of 43 cents per kilowatt hour will be reduced to 37 cents. The reduction of 6 cents came after CUC was notified by Mobile Oil Marianas Island Inc. of a decrease in international fuel oil prices. Gas prices went down earlier this week, marking this as the fifth rollback of the month. One gallon of regular gas on Saipan is now $5.71, Tinian $7.44, and Rhoda $7.34. Several lawmakers have been proposing for a gas and utility stimulus, expressing residents are in trying times. CUC has previously announced they are in current conversations with the administration regarding additional assistance to utility consumers. CUC has also imposed a $150 credit to all residential accounts for the July billing. For further inquiries and information, CUC customers are encouraged to visit the Customer Service Center at the CUC office in Lower Dandan. 
The Department of Lands and Natural Resources, along with several government officials, broke ground on an upcoming Rick Rock revetment project. The Garapan fishing base will soon have a protective barrier in its waters to prevent erosion. In a groundbreaking ceremony on Thursday, Secretary Anthony Beneventi of the Department of Lands and Natural Resources explained their Rick Rock revetment project. This Rick Rock revetment will protect our shoreline and will be a design of, of uh, similar to what the Peace Park is in terms of the uh, rock, uh, rock uh, protection. And this will surely last for over 50 years as GHD, the designers, uh, believe that they would do. The project is worth $646,000, which is being fully funded by the governor's office. USA Fanter is the contractor of the project, while GHD is the construction manager. Construction is expected to be completed by May of next year. From the um, uh, point, from the uh, outlet channel, um, all the way to the end of the property, about a foot uh, from the property, we're proposing to provide about a 25 foot wide uh, rock revetment cross section. Um, it's going to have a, a buried toe. The rocks are going to be about a one and a half ton rocks. And, um, and that's really it. It's a rock revetment with a geotextile uh, underlaying it. The Garapan Fishing Base is a special landmark with much more potential. Governor Ralph Torres reiterates the importance of saving the area and touches on future plans. Today, it's, gonna, it's another day of success, another day of progress with the administration. This will help everyone here in the CNMI, uh, tourists itself. And here in Garapan, here Garapan Fishing Base, it means a lot to all of us. We use this place for numerous reasons, um, where the Sablo Market, here at our co-op, Days of the Marianas, a lot of donations that we do throughout different um, occasions and events. Here, um, we are working with CETA, and this is something that I hope that one day we turn this place into an amusement park. Officials say this is the first step in protecting the shoreline here in the CNMI. Future projects will target Micro Beach and Manyagaha to prevent further erosion. Coming up, a new airline in the NMI comes with new investments and opportunities. Stay tuned. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They are an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. All workers have the right to a safe workplace. Employers must provide a workplace that is free from recognized hazards and comply with applicable OSHA standards, including proper reporting of injuries. Training needs to be done in a language and vocabulary employees can understand. And an OSHA information poster must be displayed prominently in the workplace. Workers 
you have the right to raise a safety or health concern with your employer or OSHA without being retaliated against. And request an OSHA consultation of your workplace if you believe there are unsafe or unhealthy conditions. OSHA can help. Free assistance to identify and correct hazards is available to small and medium-sized employers without citation or penalty. So look out, speak up, and stay safe. Job safety and health, it's not only good practice, it's the law. Check out OSHA.gov or call 664-3154 or 3155. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Ports officials welcome a new airline in the CNMI, which will be hitting the skies soon. The Commonwealth Ports Authority Board met on Thursday, approving a lease with the CNMI's newest airline. Mariana Southern Airways now has a space in their general aviation area to build a hangar. CPA Ports Chairwoman Kimberly Kin Hines. This would be uh, non-aviation revenue, which is badly needed at this time, um, given the fact that we just don't have the arrivals that we were anticipating with the opening of our borders. And so, you know, um, this is one way of basically di diversifying um, our, our means to be able to be self-sustainable. Um, we, we have, you know, obviously the aviation side, which we count on, and those are the landing fees and payment deployments. And then we have the non-aviation side, which is, you know, our leases and our, and our rentals. And so this would go towards that. Heinz welcomes the investment with Southern Airways, stating that the movement will open a lot of opportunities for travelers. It's more about the type of investment that um, Southern Marianas Air is making in the CNMI. It's about the new entry to the market. It's about an additional carrier that's going to be able to provide this service to the people of the Northern Marianas, linking up all the three islands and also to Guam, actually. And so, um, you know, it's exciting times, right? It's always good to have options. And, and the fact that they are um, offering promotional fares for a few months, uh, that's a very welcome added bonus for the people especially at a time where you know folks are thinking about going back to school shopping you also have the holidays coming up right and so obviously shopping is on the mind for many people and um, it's exciting mariana southern airways will be launching their first flight on august 12th beginning with saipan tinian flights followed by saipan rota flights on the 15th and then saipan guam flights on the 19th their website is now open for ticket sales, offering low introductory fares across all routes. You know we just don't play enough video from Tinian on the Channel 2 News. With one of the best beaches in Micronesia and warm, friendly people, we are happy to show off some of our shooting and editing highlights from this year's Pika Festival, a signature event that has pepper written all over it. Hope you like it hot. One, two, three. <laughs> Welcome everyone, my name is Marty. I'm going to take you to Tinian today. 10 to 15 minutes in here, let me leave that one open, please. Stay. The most uh, I love about Tinian, it's very hard to just say one. Um, you know, the people in itself are very friendly. Um, everywhere you go, you know, they always greet you, you know, offer you food or drink. Happy, 
Happy Pika Festival from Tinian. Celebrating the hottest Donisali in the Northern Mariana Islands. I love like the people where everyone's very close here in the island. Yeah. Get to celebrate the Donisali. Pika, first thing that comes to mind is hot. To everyone, let's enjoy Pika Festival. Congratulations to all the vendors for continuing support and to the people of Tinian. As Henry Ford once said, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. And working together is a success. Happy Pika Fest! Folks, don't go anywhere because we have sports up next. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. This project was supported by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. Contents are solely the responsibility of CHCC and do not necessarily represent the official views of the CDC or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The Tan Su Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports fans.
Tonight, we speak with a young female athlete who recently went off island to compete and came back home with medals, pride, and experience. Run often, run long, but never outrun your joy of running. A quote by Julie Esverdin. Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. Tonight, we feature one of the NMI's outstanding female runners. 17-year-old Tiana Cabrera is KSPN's young star for tonight. My name is Tiana Cabrera, and I'll be an incoming senior at Saipan International School, and I am currently 17. Cabrera is a member of the NMI Athletics National Team. Two months ago, she competed in the 2022 Oceania Athletics Championships in Australia and was the youngest member of the team. Cabrera brought home the bronze medal from the women's 3,000 meter U18 event. Well, in Australia, I kind of came in there with uh, like a mindset like I'll just try my best because obviously I'm going against like really competitive elite athletes. So I just went to the game and just, just do it and just keep going and just push it. And just a few days after the event in Australia, Cabrera rushed home to compete in the Pacific mini games. And for the mini games, same mindset, just do it and show pride and show, you know, be proud of yourself for coming how far you are because you already won. You're there. Now that these big events are over, she continues her training and is currently preparing herself for the cross country races. Currently, I'm training by myself and just prepping for cross country. So, um, to I do speed workouts, long runs, easy runs, cycling as cross training and do strength training as well. Cabrera is looking forward in pursuing a track and field career in college with hopes to come back home and continue to compete locally. Um, currently my goal is obviously I'm going to be a senior, college is going to be stressful. I just do want to be an athlete. Uh, I want to continue track and field and you know come back to CNMI and continue doing the games and try to break the record. She also has dreams to become a pharmacist one day. My field that I'm looking towards as is in Soren Science, but I want to be a pharmacist. Her mom and dad are her biggest fans and definitely her support system in everything she does. Oh, my biggest inspiration is probably my mom and my dad because they always come to my games even though I tell them not to because they get really nervous so they just come there randomly and always support me and they try their best to always like bring me up when I'm down in. Cabrera trains hard because she wants to be successful in this sport and become a professional athlete in the future. I want to see myself successful in the future and I definitely want to like I see myself as an elite athlete or like I want to be a professional athlete in the future and just represent the scene of mine let people know who we are and you know show pride. Her motto in life is to keep going, which she would like to share to all the young athletes out there. One thing that I want to tell the young kids and that stuff is to like start doing something active and then choose a sport that you like really like and just continue it, continue it and just keep going. And there will be times that you will wonder like why are you here, why are you doing this and that stuff. Just, just keep going, that's my motto, just keep going. That's all I gotta say and you know. You'll be glad that you finish it. Be proud of yourself. Fulfill all your goals. Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation.
Hey, golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass, and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time, and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Bring your friends in for the best night out at Godfather's Bar in Garibald. Sing along to your favorite hits with live music from the Gigolos. Godfathers has daily food and drink specials, like Taco Tuesdays. The best pizza on island every day of the week. Located on Palm Street in Garibald. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Ghost Gym, and today we're going to go over the kettlebell deadlift. Fantastic exercise to build overall strength, particularly in the legs and hips. Remember, we want to make sure that our setup is in good position. If, you're, if, you, if you set up in a bad position, it's not going to look good and it's certainly not going to feel good. So a common setup, error setup is a, obviously a rounded upper back. Two simple ways of correcting that. All I'm gonna have Vince do here is extend his arms up here, and all he's gonna do is think about reaching long and pushing his hips back. Reach long and push your hips back. So as you can see, he's already in good position. Now he, all he's gonna do is grab that kettlebell. He's got tension in his legs and in his back. All he's gonna do is just stand up tall, finish with his glutes. And for the case fan weather report, mostly cloudy with scattered showers, south southeast wind 5 to 9 miles per hour. Tonight mostly cloudy with scattered showers, east southeast wind 5 to 8 miles per hour, high 85, low 79, the humidity 84%. Tomorrow partly sunny with scattered showers, east southeast wind 5 to 7 miles per hour, high 85, low 79. The marine forecast combined seas of 3 to 5 feet are expected through Sunday. Southeast wind 5 to 15 knots, wind waves 1 to 3 feet, east swell 3 to 5 feet. The sunrise will be at 5.58 a.m., high tide at 9.37 p.m., low tide at 2.31 p.m., and the sunset 6.48 p.m. All right, there you have it. That is your weekend edition of the news, sports, and weather here in the Marianas. We thank you so much for watching the Channel 2 News. We hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.